Today's video is all about the most underrated anime of all time that you need to watch. Did your favorites make the list? Keep watching to find out. All right, not gonna lie, Death Parade is a dark anime, but it's also one of the most heart-wrenching reflections on life after death and the idea of purgatory out there right now. It's heavy stuff, and may not be for everyone, but for those who really love strong, character-driven stories, then you absolutely need to add Death Parade to your list. It's all set at a mysterious bar, where at the instant of death, people arrive there and meet the mysterious Decim. He challenges them to a game, usually something simple like darts or bowling, but over the course of the game, things usually turn darker, and the individual's true nature is revealed, helping Decim decide who deserves to be reincarnated and who deserves to enter the pitch black void, right? Crazy stuff. And after that dark description, would you believe me if I told you that Death Parade has one of the most upbeat and cheerful anime openings I've ever seen? It's totally different from what the show actually is. And that's just one of the many ways the show constantly surprises its audience. Again, the subject material is dark, but there's something about it that makes it utterly fascinating. And once you start, you're not going to want to stop. What would you do if you were given $10 billion and told to save your country from destruction? That's the basis for the captivating survival anime Eden of the East, which blends political intrigue, psychological suspense, and general survival tropes into one really underrated anime. Maybe this one flew under the radar because it's not as violent as a lot of other survival anime, but that doesn't make it any less intriguing to watch. Basically, 12 individuals are given access to 10 billion yen to save Japan from a few Future missile strike. Nothing is off limit in what players do with the money, with the only rules being if you run out of money or spend it selfishly, they are eliminated by the mysterious supporter. It's a similar setup to what you've seen before in this type of anime, but it's just unusual enough to really stand apart from a lot of other anime. On top of the craziness, our protagonist Takizawa Akira suffers from amnesia, which immediately adds another layer on top of this already complex cake. But the anime balances all of its elements really well, and it's definitely one you need to check out and at least watch the first episode. Okay, I get it. An anime that explores man's relationship with nature doesn't sound like one of the most thrilling anime, right? And that's fair, Mushishi is a very slow-paced anime, but if you're looking for a different type of supernatural series that can both captivate you and make you feel something in your gut, then it is definitely worth watching. The anime follows Ginko, who has the ability to see ethereal beings called Mushi. These spirits usually affect humans in negative ways, so each episode is about Ginko helping the people deal with the Mushi. There's not some overarching plot or plot threads that carry over from episode to episode, so it's not an anime you need to keep track of every episode. But think of it like your standard procedural cop show with a new case of the week every episode. But again, it's really slow paced and you definitely need to be in the right kind of mood to enjoy it. If you want giant spirit battles with a ton of explosions, then this probably isn't the anime for you. But if you want a beautiful, small scale anime that you'll enjoy deep down in your soul, then Mushishi is the one you want to watch. It's a pretty straightforward logline. Moribito, Guardian of the Spirit, stars the spear-wielding warrior Balsa as she attempts to atone for the deaths of her past by saving an equal number of lives. That's pretty impressive. I mean, my life is pretty similar. I'm trying to atone for all the sour candy I ate in my past by eating more vegetables today. But yeah, you're right, Balsa is way more impressive. But in all honesty, Moribito is a beautiful anime. Like, the art style is worth checking out just by itself, but on top of its stunning aesthetic, you have a really great female protagonist at the center of this fantasy series, and watching how she interacts with Prince Chagam, a young boy whom she promises to protect, is really lovely to watch. Compelling characters make anime worth watching, and Moribito definitely checks that box. Go watch it if you're in a fantasy mood, because you won't be disappointed. How this stunning work of art snuck by everyone just baffles me. I blame some ancient evil that cursed our land in making us not watch good anime. It's the only logical explanation. Hey, you like superheroes, right? Of course you do, everyone loves superheroes. They're everywhere in our media right now. Like, I'm pretty sure if you just peek outside your door, you'll see three billboards teasing Marvel's next 45 movies spread out over six years. But what about superheroes in your anime? Chances are, if you're watching this video dedicated to anime, you either love or at least are aware of My Hero Academia or One Punch Man. 
Those two shows really take up a lot of space in the superhero anime genre, but that doesn't mean there aren't more out there worth checking out. One of which is Samurai Flamenco, which sounds straightforward enough. A young male model decides to change up his life by pursuing his dream of becoming a superhero. Only problem is, he has no special abilities or powers whatsoever, and it gets him in trouble with a series of criminals. Sounds goofy, and the first half of this anime is a lot of fun, only before it pivots about halfway through and gets way more intense. Definitely not enough credit is given to this anime. So go add a new superhero anime to your watch list, right now! I can't even begin to describe just how terrifying Tokyo Magnitude 8.0 is. No, there's not scary ghosts or spooky monsters or giant rampaging robots to frighten you, but rather it's a relatively simple premise of young people trying to survive after a devastating earthquake. It's a harrowing experience that will grip you from start to finish, and I personally think that's the sign of a really great anime. If you like your anime happy and funny, then you should probably look elsewhere. But if you love really heavy-hitting, engaging stories, then you should watch Tokyo Magnitude 8.0. The story sees middle school student Mirai Onozawa and her little brother Yuki out in the city when the earthquake destroys everything. In the aftermath, they meet a single mother named Mari Kusakabe who agrees to help the young siblings. Together, the group sets out to return home and reunite with their families. Again, this isn't a fun anime by any means, but sometimes the best stories deal with darker subjects, and it's arguably one of the scariest anime you'll ever watch. But on the other side, it's a really important story about mankind's ability to overcome trauma and keep moving forward no matter what. You may not know the name Shinichiro Watanabe, but you do know his works. He's most famous for Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Champloo, two icons in the anime world. But Watanabe is responsible for other projects as well that I think are really underrated especially the anime Michiko and Hachin. It's set in South America, where a recent prison escapee named Michiko rescues an orphan from an abusive foster home with the intent to find the orphan's father. Their relationship to one another is complicated, but all you need to know is that Michiko believes that if they find him, they can all have a happy life together. This leads to a spectacular adventure with the two of them hitting the road together. Anyone who knows Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Champloo knows that Watanabe always has great music in his shows, and Michigo and Hachin is no different. On top of that, you have an amazing story with a stellar cast of characters, and it's all animated beautifully in a way that honors a lot of South American culture. Everything about this anime is great, and you should really consider checking it out. It may not be his best work ever, but Michiko and Hachin is definitely Watanabe's most underrated work. I think our brains are naturally wired to want to watch monsters fight each other. Like if you wake up in the morning, I'm pretty sure your natural instincts are eat, use the bathroom, and seek out awesome monster fights on YouTube. Well, the anime Killing Bites will not only satisfy that craving for awesome battles, but you'll also learn a ton of neat animal facts, and really, who doesn't want that? Due to some unfortunate circumstances, the nervous college student Yuya meets the beautiful Hitomi, who he witnesses transform into a honey badger animal hybrid and battle a massive lion monster. If you're not already sold, then you need to go see your nearest doctor because this anime is awesome! Yuya is soon drawn into a massive Hunger Games-esque world where fighters have been created by combining human bodies with different animal genetics to create amazing beasts called brutes. Now Yuya and Hitomi must work together to take down the other fighters. Overall, this could have been your standard battle anime, but the level of detail put into each animal hybrid really makes it worth watching. It's just as educational as anything on Animal Planet, but you know, just with a lot more blood and violence. Slice of life anime are great for a variety of reasons. Sometimes you just want to sit back, turn your mind off, and just watch a show that can put a big smile on your face. Well, my friends, one of the best examples of an underrated anime that represents that idea is Silver Spoon. It's an agricultural anime. Wait, stop, keep listening. I promise it's really good. It's a really fun series that subverts a lot of expectations when it comes to its subject matter. It follows Yugo Hachiken, a hardworking student tired of not meeting the goals expected of him. He enrolls in a school for agriculture thinking he'll do well, but soon discovers just how out of his element he actually is. He comes to find he is a complete amateur when it comes to agricultural life and that there's a lot he needs to learn with the help of his new friends. Those looking for a straight-up cooking anime will be disappointed, but in a lot of ways, Silver Spoon is even better in its examination of agriculture and what actually goes into making and growing your own food. So if you're looking 
looking for just an all-around nice anime, Silver Spoon will hit the spot. There are countless sports anime out there demanding your attention, but one that's flown under the radar is the fantastic tennis anime Baby Steps. Don't you just hate it when sports anime don't actually explain the sport they're portraying? That's one of my biggest anime pet peeves, besides protagonists with insanely goofy hair. But fortunately, Baby Steps is not only a thrilling and entertaining look at the tennis world, but it's also extremely educational in how it presents the sport. Like, after you're done watching it, you'll be able to watch a real-life tennis match and have a pretty good idea on what's going on. So if you've ever been curious about tennis, or if you just want a really great sports anime, Baby Steps is the one for you. The anime focuses on Eiichiro Maruo, a first-year honor student who wants to shake things up and exercise more. He stumbles on the tennis club and his whole life changes. What's great about Baby Steps is Maruo is a true beginner in the sport, and we get to watch him learn the ropes and use his intense study methods to slowly get better. Throw in one of your best romances in any anime and you got yourself a winner. Personally, I think Michiko and Hachin deserves more recognition. What about you? What do you think is the most underrated anime, and are there any we missed? Let us know in the comments, and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more awesome anime content. Thanks for watching CBR.